What, another one? <laughs> uh, people outside the UK might not get that joke. Uh, yeah, another video. I should never try and predict whether I'm going to make more videos or not. Um, here we go. Making a video now because um, it's all making sense. It's all it's all coming together, and it's about the soulmate connection and everything else. And so, so when I started meditating properly, well, you know, about six years ago, I kind of just dipped into it, and then. About five years ago, I really started doing it properly. Have this amazing experience feeling God. So I kept up with the meditation. I kept doing it. Now, one of the biggest difficulties for me was, um, at some point, I would get within half an hour of meditating, and then my feet would feel like they were burning. It could have been on my heel, it could have been my toe. But really serious heat, pain, burning. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. And then I realised that pain was sort of like a resistance of a deeper feeling. So I, you know, I was attempting to allow the pain, if you like, but recognise that there was a deeper feeling in me. And then more recently, about two years ago to a year ago, you know, I would be allow I would be able to allow that, uh, so not resist so much so that it was on the soles of my feet or anything. And then it would be a pressure in my back, and that's probably the pressure in my back is probably the most common feeling. I've had during meditation. So it's sort of mid-back and it feels like it's a, a pressure that wants to come up but for whatever reason I'm not letting it. I, I know. I, I will tell you. I've already said it. You know, it is the soulmate connection. It is the other half of my soul is always there. So before I was completely resisting it, completely out of my uh, when, if you like, my body completely out, then letting it in sort of near to the heart, but not quite in. So what I do a lot now is, as soon as that pressure comes, accept that there's still, you can still go deeper into the heart. And it's not always easy to do, but when you're in the right conditions, the right mode, sort of let go and allow stuff, it can then envelop me and it's a wonderful feeling like I said in my video soulmate connection it's actually like an orgasm and I am in a position then when I am both parts of my soul not that the other half of my soul isn't ceasing to exist or anything like that but I'm recognizing that you know I am a full soul what male and female parts, uh, and that is the full soul. And then there, at that point, I'm uh, in a better place for communicating with God on a feeling basis. <coughs> so, although, <coughs> so although the 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 mouth that you can see speaking to you now is male, I am male, right? This body is male. When I connect to my full, true self, I am both male and female. Because I had this little worrying thought earlier, sort of, I look at YouTube earlier this today and saw some videos on reincarnation. Uh, one guy that I listen to sometimes and he was against it, so that annoyed me a bit because of the title of the video seemed to suggest it was going to be talking about reincarnation and just came out against it so I didn't bother watching anymore and I watched a documentary about a boy who who'd said he was a previous life you know and this boy from the age of two 
uh, was saying, he's in Scotland, and saying, oh, I used to live in Barra, and I had a, I had a different family there, and stuff like that. And this documentary from, you know, and they start checking it out as he's getting a bit older, and by the time he's five or six, I think, they go to Barra. And they confirm a lot of the things he was saying. So, yes, there'll be a school of people who say, oh, a spirit connected hit to him and gave him those memories and stuff like that. <laughs> Don't believe it at all. Uh, you know, I mean, this little boy saying that, you know, when he was in between lives or whatever, he got a ticket from God and jumped into a hole. And there's another boy who's also described coming into the life, his current life, like that, jumping into a hole. So, very interesting. Um, but there was just one thing that flashed up when they were showing, you know, lots of kids have sort of talked about being at home in a previous life. And there was just one that flashed up saying, Girl says she was a boy in a previous life. So that made me sort of... So I thought, well, I don't like that because that doesn't fit in with my sort of uh, theories here. So, you know, what's going on there? But I, so I had to think about it. And so say, um, you know, so this is how it is, right? So I could say to you, in a previous life, I was a woman. But I could also say, in this life, I am also a woman. It's just, you know, I wake up every morning in the man shell. And she wakes up every morning in the woman's shell. And, but we're both the same entity, we're both the same being that has both male and female uh, parts, like two, a pair of gloves. Um, so, but now when I'm um, embodying my full soul, I'm also a woman. So if in, let's say in the previous life, as you said to me, if you said to me, oh, in your previous life, how do you know you weren't a woman? Well, I'd sell I was, right? So if I was, if I, if in my previous life I was waking up in the woman's shell every morning, then I would be the woman part of my soul. Right now I'm the male part of my soul. So I'm just the male part of my soul. Does that make sense? Anyway. Oh, God, this is quick. Hang on. One belong, just two seconds. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so, so, yeah, the reincarnation thing does kind of fit in with the, with the soulmate connection. And also, one of the little uh, issues I've been wondering about... Um, which is making more sense now, is um, you may or may not know in my previous channel, and I've mentioned it before, but I've I got a very, 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 very strong feeling that I was Enoch, seventh from Adam, not the other one. Um, so I have often thought because I, I don't know if this is for sure, but for some reason I may have had a gap uh, from having been Enoch to um, maybe just to several hundred years ago. Maybe there was a gap. I don't know for sure. But I think that's that was the feeling I got. And so I've always wondered, like, so okay, so even if it wasn't me, let's just say whatever, even if you know, so many ifs here, fair enough. Um, but it's a personal thing. But anyway, the issue I had was, if I got taken to God and had a gap, what happened to my soulmate? Did my soulmate not? You know, I was thinking at the time, maybe my soulmate didn't like what I was doing, you know, and, oh, you go off with God or whatever. But, you know, because of this uh, understanding I've got now, if I had a gap, my soulmate had a gap. So... This is just sort of, so these recent realizations I had are just seeming to put everything into place. And so the, I can sit down and meditate and I know that the most common feeling I have is 
to recognize the other half of my soul. It's, a, it's amazing really and I suppose on one part I'd like to let people know that it will be the same for them too, you know, if you sit down to meditate the most common feeling you're going to get is the other half of your soul. But maybe like me, at the beginning, I was totally resistant to that. And so it came out in a pain on the soles of my feet. It was like a, a hot burning. And I pondered what it was. You know, to be honest, most of the time when I was dealing with it and trying to allow it, I was thinking it was part of the world's pain or my own sort of pain or something like that and then I wasn't sure maybe it was Mother God and for a while I thought this is Mother God that I'm not kind of accepting. Which even just the bringing up of the female is going to connect me to my soulmate as well because that's what I've noticed now as well is that anytime I think of a female it sort of reminds me of the other half of my soul and I'm and then and then I'm feeling it, whether as a pressure in my back, because I'm not feeling it fully, like right now, or when I feel it fully. So why don't I go ahead. And when, when I allow it, it's just like, it's like I'm a, it's like I'm twice the person. I've got I've got another thing here with me. Um you know, the right to my left. And And it's so nice. And also the heart palpitations that I've talked about before as well. As they've gone on, they've flowed more easily and they're not such a palpitation. It's more like a flow. Uh, you know, right into my heart. And that's also connected with this soulmate connection. And like I say, when when I'm feeling, when I'm embodying, but and it's not e it's not an easy one. It's like as soon as I have a thought in my head that disrupts the connection. It's 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 really really a purely purely feeling base. It's got to just stay so completely in the feeling. And uh, for anyone who's had some of these feelings, feeling is more it certainly is. Anyway, so, um, all right? Yeah. I'm just finishing off. Uh, so I think I'll finish off. I don't know why I, I want to sort of stay and talk more because there's so much to talk about, but um, probably mainly just me bragging, saying I'm right. 2020 has started off just like it says in Psalm 120. I called to the Lord and he answered me. That's good. That's a good thing. But then, to put up with all these lies and deceit. There's just lies and deceit coming out. Be wary of that. Don't fear World War Three. It's not going to happen. But, as things start to get better, people aren't expecting things to get better. They don't know about these 19-year waves or anything else. So... They're really not expecting it to get better, they're expecting the shit to carry on as it has been past several years, but it isn't going to. Things are going to get better, they're going to feel better, and by the time we're at 2024, that is going to be the prime time for the bastards, right, to hit, to do their nasty bits. And, you know, whether it's injections or it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be all of that, right? It's going to be the opportune time for them to put this on people. Because people's guards are going to be down by then. It's going to be like, oh yeah, everything's cool. And they're not going to expect that things are going to go down again. But they are. 
So that by 2028 then people will start suspecting that things are going down again and by then it may be too late, they may have already have accepted these injections but um, so my advice would be not to. Um, what else was there? It came to my mind a second ago and it's gone again flipped in, flipped out um, 2020, I can't remember it might come, it might not you can't try, you can't try and remember it, it never works it never works <laughs> anyway, I'll just have to do another video at some point What was I going to talk about? What? What was I going to talk about? Nothing. <laughs> what, what are you mad about? I don't know. Sorry. What? You're not expected to know. I was what? Just... Doesn't matter. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I need to chill more. I think I prepared my videos when I was slow and chilling. I think I made this great effort to blurt everything out for people who are impatient. I don't think, um, you know, I'm, my videos are very unpopular, or not, they're just not popular, you know, not getting views and stuff, but who knows, in a couple of years time, they might. I mean, it's unlikely because YouTube doesn't really promote old videos at all, so, but you never know, you never know. Yeah, I made a very quick video yesterday about the uh, this um, theory that's going round, it may have just begun, I don't know if it's going to pick up that 666 in Greek, in ancient Greek I think they're saying, certainly isn't modern Greek, but in the ancient Greek and how would they exactly know how ancient Greek was spoken, I mean they claim to know how they pronounce the X in Greek, in ancient Greek, I think in modern Greek it's like a she or a chi. <coughs> and uh, so they claim in that it says Cheezers, but you know, would they really know that? And um, you know that that would be a very odd thing indeed, if that is the case. And I don't, I suspect it's just complete fallacy. It's like another flat Earth thing. I think enough people have experienced the the blessing of the name Jesus. Uh, but also, like I said, they pin it on this. 1611 Bible which didn't have any J's in it and then they say and this bloke is, is the bloke who invented the letter J but he, would have been, he wouldn't have invented the sound it's like oh, oh let's come up with a new sound and let's stick it in front of all these biblical words you know why not um, now look it, today you know in Spain they say J with like a huh, 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 or like a huh. uh, in Norway, they say J like a Y. But some dialects in Norway do say J in the middle of the country and stuff. They have a word uh, J E G, which is pronounced Y uh, for most of the Norwegians. But these ones say Jeg. You know, and then in the middle of the, like Lillehammer, that area, they say Jeg. So you don't always know how people are going to be saying or pronouncing these letters. Now, I think the first thousand years since uh, Yahushua, um, you know, things were very much verbal, that passed on stories verbally. And if there was a powerful name, the name of God, and this name has power, you know, they're not going to get it wrong, are they? It's good. That's going to... You know, they're not going to say, oh, the name's Jesus, and then the person next to them goes, what? With us? No, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, right. Okay, Jesus. Um, and, and it survived 
um, like Yahushua would have been his name, because we we sort of know that he was called God saves, and Yahushua means God saves because they called God Yah. And I think in the Bible we can see this evolvement of what they call God in the Bible. It starts with Elohim, which is plural, which is probably uh, good because that's mother and father, that is plural, there's sort of two. But that wouldn't have been the name, well it might have been, but it's probably a name that we made up for God. Then, like within a few pages, whoever's claiming to be God at that point is saying, I'll now be known as Yudha Vudha, Y H V H, right? However, vowels were put in there, we don't know. You know, and then it's like um, changing all the time. Um, it's, we've got the Most High, we've got Lord of Hosts, we've got the Almighty. We've got the I am, um, and then we get into the New Testament, and I mean, you read the New Testament now, it's just full of the name Jesus. But I can, I can actually start to see that Yahushua, right? Because I've always, I've said for a long time that Yahushua is the one who's, who God revealed his name, her name to, and so he. He, he comes up with this name, right, Jesus, and he's healing in the name of Jesus. And there's scripture where there's other people healing in his name, and he says, that's fine, you know, if they're not against us, they're on our side. <laughs> Let them carry on. And he's, when he's saying goodbye to his disciples, he's asking the Father to uh, look after them with the power of the name that he gave him, so he's saying, look after them, Father, in the power of the name that you gave me. So you could read that as saying, you know, the name he gave him when he was born, because he was, they were told to name him this specific name, um, which means God saves. And, um, or it could be the name, that you could read it as, this is a name that's been revealed to him as an adult, that he's worked out and now he's healing people with the power of this name and everything else. So that could be read both ways. Um, there are other clues. There's a, someone was doing a bit parable of the vineyard, I quite like him actually. Talks quite a long time. He's nice. I like him. And uh, he he's the one that I heard about this 666. And he, he's not really into it either. He was just showing what's being said. Um, but he was looking at some scripture where it said uh, in the end days that, the, that his name would be blasphemed. You know, God's name would be blasphemed every day. Now, which name is blasphemed more than any other name? Well, it's Jesus, isn't it? People are saying it all the time. Jesus, Jesus Christ, ah, oh, Christ, Jesus, right? So, it kind of fits, right? So, it's not going to be, Jesus isn't going to be the name of the Antichrist or whatever, because, you know, there we go, it's fit in Scripture. People are, are blaspheming it. They've been blaspheming it for a long time and they continue to blaspheme it today. And they'll be blaspheming it tomorrow. So that, you know, it doesn't say anything about people using the name of the Antichrist to blaspheme. So nothing really fits in with this theory, although for a moment you could kind of look at the evidence they put forward and be a bit worried and think, shit, we've been tricked here. And you should consider it, you know, you should consider everything and think through it. Yeah. So, um, I think, um, in my mind, I'm definitely secure that, that Jesus certainly isn't the name of the Antichrist, and I'm pretty certain Jesus is the name of God. And if we look at Revelation, uh, when, um, when it begins, John is talking about Jesus Christ. And I, I might have to get the book down again, and maybe do another video on this, but going from memory, um, God sends 
Yahushua, even though it doesn't say Yahushua, it says Jesus. God sends Yahushua, and it says Jesus Christ at the beginning of Revelations. God sends Jesus Christ to show John this vision. And um, then, halfway through Revelations, um, it says the seven thunders spoke, but they told John not to write down what they said. And I'm saying from that, he learnt something that we aren't told about. But then at the end of Revelation, he doesn't. Say, he said he refers to God and His Christ, right? But then he doesn't say Jesus Christ again. He says Lord Jesus. And maybe there's a bit of confusion here for John. I'm not sure, but um, God sent. Yahushua to show John a vision and John bows down to Yahushua and Yahushua says no don't I'm just a fellow brother right and so then and and then at the end is he's he's saying Lord Jesus he's not saying Jesus Christ he says God and his Christ about a couple of paragraphs before but then he says Lord Jesus Lord Jesus couple two or three times and Lord being God giving the name to God putting that name to God so there is there is this area of doubt but either way you look at it either way it doesn't all fit in properly but it fits in more properly with Jesus being the name of God God's name, like God, we haven't made it up. We haven't made up a name for God. The God, it's God a name that if you say in your head or out loud, um, will attract the attention of God because it's his, her name. Yeah. So that's that. <laughs> so it's all it's all just fitting into place, really, and. Um, I like that. I like things fitting into place. It's good. Feels good. Yep. So it's really, um, I think it's, I want to make a point that, you know, I set out on a journey spiritual journey and um, it's really paid off I mean it hasn't paid off in other ways <laughs> I haven't got any friends everyone thinks I'm nuts but I don't care because I kind of know that well they're probably more nuts than me in a sense or just you know prefer to be ignorant of things than actually explore and when you explore or put yourself out on a limb, you know, it's uh, risky. But hey, go take risks if you want to pay off. So, yeah. I thought of it, so I'm going to do it. Let's just get into this. Uh, I want to just read the Church of Laodicea. Because, you know, I made the same mistake. I read it, and I was like, oh, that's not good. That can't be the seventh one. Must be the wrong way around. To the angel of the church at Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the prime source of all God's creation. I know all you... See, that... Who's that talking? That's love. That's... That's... What's... Well, it says prime source of all creation. And God's creation, because we all got to work in this symbiotic nature with love. If you're not doing it with love, you're not doing it. 
I know all your ways, you are neither hot nor cold. How I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. So this is love speaking. So I, so this, you know, that sounds bad, and people read that and they think, oh dear, that's not good, is it? But as we read on in a minute, it's it's not bad. But you know, you, you so I feel that myself. You know, I get to this point where kind of everything's worked out, and you know, I'm not hot or cold at the moment, really. I'm pretty lukewarm most of the time, in a sense. I was hot before for it, you know, I was seeking, I needed to find. But having found and having stuff, you know, it's sort of... And like now, you know, I sort of be a bit more careful probably. And this, I think, what it's on about is like being careful, you know. I can't, I can't deal with you being careful. Like, either be, a hot, either be hot or cold. If you want to learn, you've got to make mistakes. You can't, you're not going to be making, you're not going to be doing stuff if you're just lukewarm, are you? So, I think it's a stage we get to. So this is seventh church, right? This is the last stage in your development. And, you know, so you get to this point and it's giving you some advice. Don't be, don't be so careful. Either be hot or cold, you know, on something. It's better because then you learn. You learn right and wrong. You say how rich I am and how well I have done. Yeah, because you've got here. I have everything I want. Yeah? It feels like that. In fact, though you do not know it, you are the most pitiful wretch, poor, blind and naked. But until this stage, you've not been aware of that you are an eternal being. You get to this stage, you're aware you're an eternal being. But the stage that you are in, we're in inf infancy stage really in our, our eternal life, we are the most pitiful wretch, poor, blind and naked. That's where we've got to. But, at least you're there. So I advise you, to buy from me gold refined in the fire to make you truly rich. Right? So it's saying it's there for you. You know, you pitiful wretch, poor blind and naked. But here, buy some of this gold from me. Right? And by the time you get to this stage, you'll know how to. So I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire to make you truly rich and white clothes to put on to hide the shame of your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so that you may see. So it's all there for it's all there for you it's all there for you you don't have to be naked you don't have to be blind you you can get it. All whom I love I reprove and discipline so that's just, it's just telling you, look, because I love you, I'm, I reprove you and I discipline you. Be on your metal, therefore, and repent. So you always got to repent, haven't you? Because you're not going to stop making mistakes. <coughs> <coughs> Here I stand, knocking at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sit to supper with him and he with me. To him who is victorious, I will grant a place on my throne, as I myself was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. So that's uh, quite a big thing that's just being said there. Because it's basically saying that, you know, at one point, I myself was victorious. I sat with my father on his throne. Actually, that's now confused me because that doesn't sound like love talking. I mean, that sounds like... To me, you see... Uh, does it change? You see, I can see now how people feel that is Jesus... Oh, yeah, Yahushua speaking to... Um, 
So that is a bit confusing actually. So he's got to be a bit careful, haven't we? They're just words in a book after all. But anyway, that just makes me think about um, our f mother and father, or our father, uh, was was once like us. And therefore, eventually, some point in the future, however long, we will be like God is now, which is always the feeling I've had. As I myself was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we're going to have a... We've got our own universes, like uh, Yahushua said, you know. My father has many mansions. If not, I would have told you. This universe has got a hundred billion galaxies thereabouts. The center of every galaxy is a black hole. Doesn't it make sense that you go into that black hole, you're in a new universe? And then this universe would could be accessed from a black hole in a higher universe. And it's huge. It's huge. So let, while I've got this open then, let's just check <clears throat> what it says at the beginning. This is the revelation given by God to Jesus Christ. It was given to him so that he might show his servants what must surely happen. So this is a revelation given by God to Jesus Christ to show his servants. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. So th that's a bit ambiguous that he, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. Is he referring to Yahushua or God? who in telling all that he saw has borne witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Happy is the man who is again. John to the seven churches, grace be unto you, to him who loves us, greenness, among all us. A vision. I, John, your brother, who share with you the suffering and suffering and joints which is ours in Jesus. I was on the island called Patmos. I had preached God's word and borne my testimony to Jesus. It was on the Lord's day and I was caught up by the Spirit. And behind me I heard a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet, which said to me, write down what you see on the scroll and send it to the seven churches. Da, da, da. I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven standing lamps of gold and among the lamps, one like a son of man, robed down to his feet with the golden girdle around his breast. The hair of his head was white as snow white wool, and his eyes flamed like fire, and his feet gleamed like burnished brass refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held the seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face shone like the sun in the full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand upon me and said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, and I am the living one, for I was dead, and now I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and death's domain. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what is here, be hereafter. Here is the secret meaning of my seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven lamps of gold. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lamps are the seven churches. So, so is that Yahushua standing in front of him? I think it is, isn't it? Right, so that is, then we get into Revelations, so that's Revelation 1, right, so let's go to the end, I'm not going to, in the middle is when it says the seven thunders spoke and then they were told not to write down what you saw, right, no one's going to dispute that. So then we get to the very end of Revelation, okay, yeah. uh, I just want to see where it says God and his Christ. It says God and the Lamb. Throne of God and the Lamb. See, again, everyone says the Lamb is Yahushua as well, but I'm not sure why, you know, because at the point where, before the Lamb opened the scrolls, John was crying because there was no one to open the scrolls. Now, surely... 
the Ahusha was already there, but then it's a vision. Anyway, it does say God and his Christ somewhere. I can't remember exactly where. But here and it says, I, Jesus, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. So, it's, the thing is, though, if that name, if it's now, now when he's saying Jesus, he's referring it to the right person. So we don't know if God, it says at the beginning, God sent Jesus Christ, Yahushua, and then did Yahushua send another angel, you know, like, possibly, but he's a pretty big angel, I mean, he's the one with the burnished brass feet and everything, I mean, it's, it's like a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? I am the scion and offspring of David, the bright star of dawn. Come, say the spirit and the bride. Come, let each other hear a reply. Come forward, all who are thirsty, accept the water of life, free gift to those who desire it. For my part, I give this warning to everyone who's listening. Oh, yeah. God will add to him. Da, 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 da. God will take away from him. Da, 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 da. He who gives this testimony speaks. He who gives this testimony speaks. Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. S Some witnesses read with all. Others read with all God's people. Others read with God's people. Some add Amen. So it's not clear, it's not clear as day. I mean, there are a lot of words in this and that makes it ambiguous. But there's certainly a change. There's no more mention of Jesus Christ. Now it's Lord Jesus. So what's changed? Has John learnt? Oh, hang on, where's the bit where he's told not to kneel to him? And he showed me the river, the water of life, God of the Lamb, no, God of the Lamb, bloody hell, oh yeah, God of the Lamb, yeah. Happy is a man that I, John, who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell in worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me, but he said to me, no, not that. So when he's saying the angel that has shown him to me, he's referring to that one with the feet as burnished brass, which most people think is Yahushua. Bloody hell. <laughs> why, why did I start doing this? Uh, I fell in worship at the feet the angel has shown to me, but he said to me, No, not that. I am but a fellow servant with you and your brothers and the prophets and those who heed the words of this book. It is God you must worship. I mean, that's as clear as day, right? There's no mention there that you should also worship the only begotten Son of God, as often people refer to Yahushua. Because we're all children of God, so there is no other hierarchy than that. There's God the Father and Mother, and there's all the rest of us. In all the different parts of our journeys that we're on, it's all God's plan. There's no other hierarchy of that. There's no only begotten Son of God. There's no special one. Not permanently. Maybe in periods, you know. This is your time to do your thing. This is a special time for you to fulfil your purpose. It's very important. You know, it's always very important. But sometimes some people will be at the front. You know, someone's going to be at the front perhaps. So... The only hierarchy is God and the rest of us, the children. And God's name is Jesus. Said like that, Jesus. 
and um, yeah, it's truth. Oh yeah, ideas. I made a short video as well. And if an angel is an idea, because, and this could be the whole thing with when uh, Yahushua refers to the children of the evil one, and um, and the, and the, the the good ones, and that the children of the evil one be done away with, the stumbling blocks people would be done away with. So what about you have? You know, we have, an, I'm sure I can just turn to a page and there'll be a, there'll be a mighty angel. I mean, a mighty angel could be a mighty idea. Because aren't ideas fantastic? Um, if an idea comes to me, well, I might as well just say that. An angel came to me. I mean, what's, an angel came and told me this. Or I got this idea. What's the difference? And you can have a bad idea and you can have a good idea. You can have a true idea. An idea which is true. Let's say someone once had the idea that the earth must orbit the sun and not the sun orbiting the earth. And that was an idea. And it was a true idea and it led to more discovery. And if you have a bad idea that's false, it probably quashes more discovery because until you fix that bad idea you've got, you're not going to get any good ideas. And I was wondering if I could... And I looked upon there was a white cloud, and upon the clouds sat one like the Son of Man. Oh, hang on. Another idea came out of the heavenly temple. <laughs> there, okay. Right. Doesn't make so much sense. The idea who has authority over fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's more work to be done on that, I think. So, yeah, I think that'll do then. Leave something for tomorrow. Okay, ciao, bye.